You are listening to the team of Victor, Vince, and Adam of Runner Runner Games. You can find them on the web at runnerrunnergames.com or facebook.com slash runnerrunnergames. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Runner Runner Games podcast. As always, I'm the Pyro Master of Ceremonies, Victor Johnson, or Sloth, wherever you want to call me. And over the weekend, we had the most amazing magic experience of my life. You could dare say it was magic. Oh. Uh, not, not for the entire team, just just for uh, you know one of us. And uh, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll cast your votes now. Well, we'll give you five seconds. Okay, I'm just going to cut it short. I had a really good weekend. Uh, Vince <laughs> had an okay weekend, and Adam, well, you know, sometimes you just lose. But A lot. Yes, so if you guys don't know what we're talking about, in our very own backyard, we had the Richmond Open. And uh, day one was standard, day two was Legacy and Modern. I played the Modern with a very wonky deck, but, uh, you know, that, that's enough about me. Let's... Let's go ahead and talk to our gentleman here in arms. How are you doing tonight, Adam? How are you doing tonight, Vincent? Um, I'm doing just fine. I bet you I can tell you how Adam's doing. Not very well. Mm. No, I was going to say... Um, salty. Probably. Uh, no, 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 that was Vincent. Vincent's getting the salt shaker for Christmas. Uh. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was, uh, it was a salty weekend. Uh, no, I told Adam I'm getting you a salt shaker for Christmas, and he's going to put a little fedora on it. Oh, sweet. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm doing much better than I was on Sunday night. Uh, you were questioning whether or not you were going to continue playing Magic. You really were. Uh, I was. I mean, you know, sometimes uh, you, you can actually share the wisdom that you were given by some very uh, top-tier players, some guys that are very experienced in the Magic community. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's look at, let's go let's talk to Vince first, and because he also has something he wants to talk about. Well, what we'll address that at the end of the show? Because he went to the uh, was it GP New Jersey? Yeah, I went to GP New Jersey. All right, and that that was actually pretty cool. He did very well there, even though he ended up uh, dorping at the last second. Yeah. But but Vince, how was uh, how was day one for you in standard? What did you play? What did you see? And you know, I I, I we all know how you left. But the you know the viewer listeners don't know, but j- just give us some insight here. How was your your day one? Uh, well, day one, uh, the standard part of the open, I played our um, our homebrew Naya deck, which is a Naya Walker's mid range style deck. Um, it's it, it was it was fun. Uh, I ended up going to three drop because uh, I saw a very uh, wide variety of decks. I saw five total decks, two of them being blue black control. Uh, one of them was Teamer Monsters, and then I saw a homebrew. I think it was a Jun variety. I was I'm not sure what it was, um, but one of the biggest things that I learned about over the weekend was a really neat interaction that I had no idea that existed. You can um, uh, you can uh, resolve Ashiok's minus ability. Ashiok being uh, the, the ability being uh, return a creature exiled with Ashiok to the battlefield um, by removing X counters. Um, you can do that while maintaining priority. You can activate a Perilous Vault, which exiles everything. And then, you know, the stack resolving as the stack does, you get the creature and everything else is exiled. So they took your Rabble Master and then, uh... <laughs> I don't want to talk about what they took. <laughs> I- I'm done with that story They now. took your innocence. <laughs> uh, needless to say, he took my Rabble Master... Uh, activated a Perilous Volt and exiled my Banishing Light and got back another Perilous Volt. Whew, it's a good thing it's targetable. Oh, it's 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 like one of the worst cards in Standard. There is. I, I, I can't stand that card. <laughs> Almost as bad as Necropolis Fiend. No, no, Perilous Volt's a good card. I had no idea about the interactions with it. Of course, you know, maintaining priority and doing things like that, it's a... Uh, well, it's a very powerful card. Uh, yes, yes it is, and uh, there's a reason that it shot up in price, and blue-black control is going to be here to stay. My question is whether or not Perilous Vault will still stick around after we get the Dragon Sweeper, but, you know, yeah. time will tell. Time will tell us. All right, Adam, on day one, you chose, uh, I'm trying to word this properly without uh, triggering you. Jeskai Ascendancy Combo with uh, Alter of the Brood as the win condition. With uh what, what was it, the the green the green guy, Manatree, Flash. Sylvan Carried. Yeah, the carry added. You play like carry added and like Rattle Claw Mystic and a couple of Voyaging Satyrs and Satyr Wayfinders. 
And basically, you're just really hoping no one disrupts your combo, which I guess wasn't the best plan ever. Yeah, you got um, disrupted and... Dismantled, I think, are the words. Um, I wasn't... Round one, I actually beat a blue Light heroic player, um, and he was pretty upset. He's like, who, the, who plays this anymore? And I was like, I don't know. And uh, so round two, I see this black-white aggro deck, and uh, there's this card they drop on four called uh, Soren Solemn Visitor. Yeah. You know, they plus him, like, twice, right? And they ult him. And then my creatures that need to be alive for a turn so I can combo off, I have to sack him my upkeep. And I'm only playing, like, 12 creatures, so this isn't going to work for me. It makes it really so, rough. However, so, even though you, you didn't do well with the deck, and I want to let you continue, you did play Tygon Scheming, which which is just awesome. Okay? Somebody actually played Tygon Scheming in Standard, and I'm proud of you for doing that. I mean, it didn't go anywhere, but still. <laughs> I mean, uh, no, it helped me, like, take through time and treasure through so I was playing all those cards or whatever. Um, basically, I saw that black white aggro neck like twice, and I lost to, um, I don't even remember what the other one was. Oh, another blue-eyed heroic player, and I really thought I was going to win that. So, you know, after that I dropped and just kind of sit around and watch people. Um, is somebody's face scraping their microphone is all I'm going to ask. Politely. It's, it's probably mine. Yeah, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh, my bad. Okay, but uh, uh, what, what round did, was it? Round five that you, you decided? Yeah, I, you know, I was like, if I can go like I mean, it, you if know, I was like, I was like, if I X three, I could probably still top sixty four. Um, and when I hit like the fourth loss, I was like, all right, I'm done for you're the day. You're just dejected. I was like, I'm just, yep, we're done. Um, and this this actually leads into something that we do need to talk about that uh, I think everybody will appreciate making the right meta game call. And we really did feel like it was the right meta game call, but we should have thought a little bit more in depth about it, and we would have realized that it was not. And that it was a failure on on all of us, not just you playing the deck. Right. Well, the ironic part was um, I was talking to you guys about playing ascendancy combo, but just playing it in a deck that played, you know, things like raise uh, the monastery, alarm. yeah, raise the alarm, portly outburst, monastery switch fear, and uh, secret away. Ironically, after we talked about this and we decided against it, it wins the open this weekend. <laughs> so we That's... have. That's we have the man. right ideas. We just make don't always make the right calls. Um, we decided against it, and clearly it would have been the right call. Um, but we'll get to that later. Uh, you seem like so, you, you lost track of your thought there. <laughs> yeah. After after the fifth round, I was like, okay, I'm done. And I was, I sit around and watch, and uh, one of our buddies, Stephen Foster, uh, was X1 with this teamer aggro deck that I convinced him to play. He was playing teamer monsters, which is just playing with the big stompy guys. And I was like, hey man, we should play the Savage Knuckle Blade and this Boon Sater. And I was talking to him for like a week before we went. And he's like, so I made the changes we talked about. And here he is, he's like X and one. And like, I was like, all right then. So going into round number, it was 10 rounds, right? Yes. Yeah, round number eight, he goes, he gets to the feature match table and he plays against this guy Harwin Fryer, I think I said his name right, and I hope I hope I didn't butcher it. But uh and he's playing in game one he just he smashed his face in. Game two, I he the his opponents like Swiss Spear, Lightning Strike, you hordling outburst, all these triggers, and he's like um he, he just burns them out with like soak the flames and raise the alarm while he's attacking with people with prowess trigger. So no, they go to game three. And he just turns around and looks at you and says, w two F W T F no, no. mate. Not not yet. Not okay, yet. okay. The game three, I'm standing behind, I'm watching because, you know, it's it's a big deal. If he wins this, he can draw into top eight. Um so his uh Steven goes turn one Elvish Mystic. You know, which is pretty good for the team or aggro deck. Turn one on uh, the other guy's side, he goes Spring Leaf Drum, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> I don't think Foster knows what's going on. Uh, turn two, Foster's like, Savage, or, um, what do you play? He played, um, 
the two drop guy? Banditry? Radical on mystic. That's oh. the guy. Yes, yeah, yeah. He plays radical on mystic. I'm like, all right, cool. And you know, Foster's looking at his hand going, next turn I can he he attacks with the um Elder's Mystic. He's like, next turn I guess I can play the Storm of Dragon in my hand. Alright, so There's there's no other turn. Uh, there, there is. There's... <laughs> no, no. He takes his next like the the guy takes his next turn and then that's it. Because um, he was tapped out. Well, hold on. I, I think I missed something. There's a there's a turn where the Friar guy plays a holding out. No. Uh, Foster plays something. I think he plays Knuckle Blade and not Dragon on the turn. He like attacks for like a bunch, and then Friar's like outburst, and then Foster's like Dragon beat you, and Friar's like, all right, I go to two. And then he untaps, and he's like, Jeskai Ascendancy, Retraction Helix. And he, he's like, targeting my Goblin Token. He's like, tap Goblin Token, return Spring Leaf Drum, play Spring Leaf Drum. And he starts going through it. And Foster turns and looks, and he goes, is that how this works? I just kind of shake my head yes, and walk away. And he's like, if I would have known. Only I would have known. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you've probably never seen that version of the combo before, because it's, you know... It's the weird version, right? It's it's not the standard. It's the, it's the aggro version that play like pumps up all the creatures and yeah, well, yeah, which is pretty cool. Um, anyway, he's like, but I don't know. I, I just thought he was playing regular Jeskai, so I thought it'd be okay to tap out, you know, because he's gonna win next turn. And I was like, yeah, well, you didn't. <laughs> um, no, I'm just gonna say that. I was like, hey man, you made a good run. You can still make money. Uh, he ends up top sixteen, right? So yeah. he still gets featured on Star City's website. Yep. We'll he talk about team. we'll talk about my ventures of uh, not top six sitting here in a little bit. Uh, Stephen Foster was thirteenth place. There you go. He makes a hundred bucks. And he's we, like, let's applaud him because Jesus. Huh. Yep. That's his. Uh, it was only his second open he's ever played in. That's it's um, impressive. It really is. Bro, so man. with ow. Oh. Pull yeah. my microphone out of my ear. Yeah, you're uh, ruining it. I, all I hear is scraping, scraping noises. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all right. That was me being a smart ass. Uh, uh, and then at the end of the next morning, he's like, well, the guy knocked me out of the top eight, won the whole thing, so I guess I don't feel so bad. I mean, you know. Uh, um, that was a story about um, our, our team members on day one. Uh, I didn't go through mine on day one. No, oh, that's real. But Let's I, talk about you, Victor. How did you do day one? Uh, on day one, I, I went um, I went on paper. I was five and five, but I actually would have been six and four. Um, I decided to play Mardu mid-range, and I changed up some things, like playing Bile Blight in the main board, um, because... I thought I was going to be seeing Mardu all day, and lo and behold, I saw Mardu, I believe, four times, and I beat it three out of the four times. The other deck I saw all day was Blue-White Heroic, which I saw three times, and I beat it all three times. I just smashed its face in. Adam was actually there for one of them. He was sitting beside me when I was playing this weird guy. Um, it just it, it, it was it was rough. One of those guys was actually sick. He had the flu, and he was vomiting in the bathroom and stuff. And I got game one because he, he got a game loss because he showed up late, and then I just destroyed him game two because he flooded out. You know it's great when they're using the uh, the one drop uh, plus one plus zero oh, draw a card on your own creatures. Like he was using one of my creatures to draw cards, and I'm just like, okay, I got this game. There's no way he's coming back. I got a butcher, and no. Um, but I did fairly well. The matchup was good. The deck I lost to was red green ramp, and he was doing stuff like Stessian tactics on his horn's nest, and. <laughs> That's silly. <laughs> and that was in the main board. That wasn't even after siding. The first game took, like, I think 39 minutes or something like that. And I, I thought I could fight through. I just couldn't do it. Game two, I got stuck on four land, and then when I finally drew the land, that would have won me the game. It was a Nomad Outpost, because I had three dragons in hand and a Sarkin, and I'm just like, man, this is... This dragon. is the war. Yeah, I couldn't dragon dragon. I couldn't dragon. Couldn't double dragon? I could not triple dragon, actually. <laughs> Um, but no, it, it was, it, it was actually some of the most fun I've ever had playing Magic. It was, it, the, the atmosphere was really cool. Um, there, apparently there were some pretty, uh, nasty individuals. We'll talk about those people who, who said things like, uh, who made rude comments during the games. We'll, we'll cover that in a little bit. But, um, 
it, it, all in all, it was really cool. And I'll, I'll share you my, my lighthearted moment there at the, the very final round. I don't remember the kid's name, but he was a really little kid. He had to be like eight or something like that. Yeah. And, and I roll up to the table, and this kid's like looking tiny. He's like slumped over in his seat. Like I can barely see his head. He's just small. And he, I was like, hey, how you how you doing? Are you little? I don't I don't know his name. So we're just gonna say little Jimmy. Are you Jimmy? Are you Jimmy Thatcher? He was like, uh, yeah, you play magic. I was like, uh, you just want to go ahead and walk away with a, a winning record on your first open. He was like, well, I want to play magic. And I was like, man, I really want to go. Like I'm hungry. And I sit down and I was like, all right, look, I want to give it to to you two zero. And he was like, okay, will you at least play me in a fun game? I was like, all right, kid, I'll play you. And game one, I just destroyed him. Like, there's there's no way he would have been able to come back, even with game two and three. It, it was just really bad. So I sh- should have been six and four. And I was like, you know what, kid, you got it. I'm going to go. I'm really hungry. I'm leaving with my team. And was was it like 20 minutes after we get after we leave, we get to the restaurant that we go eat at, and Star City Games tweets out this picture with him and, and BBD. BBD is behind him giving thumbs up, and the little kids look so happy, and they're like, little Jimmy Thatcher went six and four at his first open. Go, Jimmy! And I was like, man, really? <laughs> his, his name was uh, Jared. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce the last name. Okay, Jared. See, I was close. There was a J, but no. Good job, Jared. Uh, you actually, for real though, this kid was on point like with his with his raid triggers and everything. Like He, he knew what he was doing, and... He might actually amount to something one day if he decides to follow up with magic. He finished in the hundred and first place. That's pretty cool. That's where I should have been, but you know. I had to look it up at the Star City site, but you know, <laughs> I, got, I got I got the information. You got there. <laughs> All right. So we go to the hotel. Oh, oh I was telling about the uh, the fire alarm that we slept through that we should have. <laughs> oh no! Hold on, hold on. Before the fire alarm, there was another event that occurred. <laughs> That, um, I have to retell this one because I don't allow these two to tell a story anymore. No, we're uh, we're playtesting, and they're going to laugh the whole time through this. All right, so we're playtesting. Uh, Adam has decided on a deck that he's going to play in the Legacy Open Day 2, right? Because he's, you know, we both scrubbed out of the Standard Open. He's decided on playing Imperial Painter. I don't know if anybody's aware of what Imperial Painter is capable of doing, but there is a card called Painter Servant in the deck that when it comes into play, you name a color. All permanents are all permanents in, are what is it? Every card, every card, everything it, turns blue. Every, it includes your hand and your deck. So everything all becomes even a cards color. outside of the game. Yeah, yeah. Every, everything becomes a color. He chooses blue. All right. So I've, we've play tested a couple of rounds. I know what the deck does. I know you know what I need to stop it. I need my one basic. I'm playing elves. I need one basic forest in place so I can go off and and have a chance of, of redeeming and getting victory against this this terrible terrifying deck. Um, so imperial. Uh, I'm sorry. Painter server enters play. He calls blue. Uh, I have previously fetched for my forest. You missed a turn one blood moon. That's important. Oh. Oh well, yes. I'm sorry. I fetched for a forest turn one because I'm not stupid. Um, he plays Blood Moon turn one, turning everything into mountains. So it's like, okay, well, I've got my forest. I can go off. Sure, no problem. Pass the turn back to me. I start going off. You know, I don't quite get there. It's going to happen next turn, though. Um, Ad- it turns back to Adam, and he uses a card called Pyroblast to destroy my blue, now blue forest. I, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> you destroyed a, a basic forest with the pyroblast. So what happened was Adam looks at me, I look at Adam, and we both start laughing and giggling like little schoolgirls, flapping our arms about, getting up out of our chairs, falling onto the ground, breathing heavily, and Vince knocks over Adam's deck and just crumples up onto the bed into the fetal position. That's how I remember it. Um, I, I, I knocked over the deck, then you both began laughing. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> Um, I I don't know if any of our listeners out there have ever had a basic land destroyed by a pyroblast before it is a terrible and horrifying experience when you realize how mortal your lands really are (laughs) guard your lands ladies and gentlemen guard your lands oh Jesus he thought he was wasteland proof he thought (laughs) alright next thing you know alright but uh, obviously you were playing elves and uh, but no no uh, the fire the fire I forgot about the fire uh, so apparently we were sleeping, and I didn't hear it because I was sleeping underneath the desk. Adam was sleeping on the floor. Uh, I was trying no. Uh, Vince had the uh, the well, what's the word? He had the privilege of actually sleeping on a bed. Uh, he was kicking in, in his sleep, saying no all night. So either he was reliving the nightmare of getting pyroblasted, or he was having 
Very nice dreams as a blue player. Either way. Either way, it's the same deal. Uh, you lose either way. Yeah. But apparently so, there was a the fire alarm went off, and we all just slept through it. Like, the entire hotel it was outside, I'm assuming, except uh, for yeah, us. Some people, that, some people actually evacuated the hotel because of the fire alarm. Not us. We would have died. Uh, yeah, we would have just been, you know, kill. We would have been kill. We would have been the dead. <sighs> we would have gotten the dead. Mm, so... Oh. You're going to start to see a, uh, a pattern form here when we talk, start talking about our day two experiences. So Vince, <laughs> how did you do on day two? What did you play? What did you see? And what happened? Well, day two I played Elves, um, which is which is my legacy deck. I love this deck. It's it's very me. I love it. It's combo Elves. It does all the combo Elf things where I can go off as early as turn two. Don't want to go off any later than turn three. Um, round one. I faced a Mr. Danny Jessup, who was playing elves as well. <laughs> In <laughs> the mirror, it was, uh, it was quite it, it was quite fun. Um, typically, the elf mirror comes to whoever can combo off first wins. Um, games two and games three is whoever can disrupt the other one just enough so they can't go off. Um, I ended up winning that game, or that match, rather. So uh, that was Danny Jessup. Ga- um, you want to hear the best two- part about that? Uh, the guy registered a 60-card deck, only had 59 cards in his deck, and the judges gave him an extension to go buy the card he was missing, the privileges of being a pro. Oh, yeah, and uh, he couldn't... Uh, by the way, uh, the, the uh, added part of that story, uh, Star City Games was out of the Green Sun Zenith that he needed. Which, by the way, if this helps, uh, this is actually what helped me lead on to victory with that, was as soon as somebody said Green Sun Zenith, I could assume what deck he was playing, so it made my uh, turn one decisions a lot easier ah. uh, as far as game one went. Um, I actually yeah. have um, I have something to add about that. In game one, I played against the Mardu Mirror on day one, and I was like, uh, let me just use these. Uh, I have extra sleeves with me. Just let me use these as goblins. The guy was like, oh, I've got some goblin tokens. Please, ladies and gentlemen, if you listen to this, do not ever offer tokens to your opponent, uh, especially in game one. I know it's the nice thing to do, but it gives away what you're playing. Yeah. Just don't do it. If you have Goblin Tokens, I know you're playing Rabble Master, more or less. Or Hordling or Outburst. Outburst. If you're playing one, you're playing the other. That's not necessarily true. One of the uh, decks plays Outburst and doesn't play Rabble Master. Okay, well, guess what? What? Does that de- did that deck win? Yes. Did it? No, that deck plays the Rabble Masters. Okay, oh. then. There oh, you my... go. Exactly. So continue. Anyway. Anyway, um, so round one was a victory. Uh, round two, I played against a um, a gentleman by the name of Ben Friedman, and uh, I don't know if anybody uh, knows who that is. He is um, apparently a pro day one MTG. Yeah, he's he's a pro. Uh, his, he his was motto play- is no splits ever. Uh, he was playing Jeskai Stoneblade, and the matchup was miserable. Um, I don't know if anybody has ever had counterbalance and top uh, sensei's divining top used on them at the same time, but it's a it's a dream for one player and a nightmare for the other. Counterbalance says uh, whenever your opponent casts a spell, you may reveal a top card of your library if it shares a converted mana cost with the spell. Counter it. Sensei's divining top says pay one, look at the top three cards of your library, put them back in any order. Um, or tap or draw a card. T- That's the divining top on top of the library. Yeah, and uh, Elves plays a lot of the same drop cards. So, so needless basically, to say, those two cards together say, tap, so, laugh at your opponent. Pretty much. Um, pretty much. And um, so that was that was fun. Um, round three, I played against a Marius something. I don't remember his last name. He's a local player. Um, but uh, again, another um, very proficient player in the Legacy realm. Played Jeskai Stoneblade. And that was disastrous. <laughs> <laughs> Not nearly as bad as when I played um, uh, Mr. Friedman, but uh, almost as bad. Uh, then round four, I played Blue White Miracles, and again I saw Counterbalance <laughs> and Sensei's Divining Top. <laughs> so I, I I rage quit on Legacy Day because if I saw another blue player for Legacy, I was gonna punch him in the face. Um, See, but but. It was a learning experience because, like you said, like you said to us, you need to learn what cards you need to bait them out with. Yeah, and that's 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 what I walked away with was I need to understand what blue does in legacy and how to bait out the player appropriately because I did beat I, I did 
get a a um, game win against um, all of my opponents. I at least had two ones. It wasn't just a swift two zero. So I, I did actually fight back and you know make impressions on them. So here's to hoping. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Adam. Uh, you decided to play Painter Servant. Power blasting forests. Yeah. Did you actually get to do that? No. Okay. Because uh, <laughs> he only does that against you know team members. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, so round one I played against Jeff Guy Stoneblade and uh, I resolved her one blood moon. He threw a force of will. So in order to do this, I have to use like five out of the seven cards in my hand. Whatever. I get it to stick, and I'm like, all right, cool, because you know he leads with like. He's got a Vulcan plan. I'm like, are you got a Volcanic Island? His second land drop is basic planes, and I'm like, dang it. <laughs> I can't say the word I want to think, but... Um, and he's like Stone For- Then he's like, Stoneforge Mystic, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, go get Batter Skull, and I was like, yes, I'm on a clock. <laughs> so he cheats Batter Skull on the plan. I lose game one rather quickly. Game two, I resolve turn one Blood Moon again. And I think I have him, like, locked out of the game. Oh, I play the Painter Servant, and that's fine. And uh, he gets a Jitte with a uh, Stoneforge Mystic. I'm like, what in the world are you getting that for? You know, and he forces my grind, my grindstone. And I'm like, all right, well, I can't combo off right now. And uh, so when you get three counters on the Umazawa Jitte, he just kills your Painter Servant repeatedly. So I cannot longer win the game. So. I mean... I, I lost you, round one. You know. Um, I hadn't really seen that interaction. I hadn't thought about it, or you know, would have made probably would have made the deck choices a little different. I think I made the wrong meta call for Legacy for both we'll, days. Yeah, well, we'll get to that. Um, <laughs> round two, I play against Burn and uh, eight main deck Blood Moons against a mono red deck. Probably <laughs> not all that helpful. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's not funny. I'm stop laughing now. It's, it's hilarious. hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Round three, I'm like, please don't be another burn player. Please don't be another burn player. Um, so it's another burn player. Womp, womp, womp. Yeah, so, you know, that matchup's awful for me. And then round four, I play against Affinity and I actually win. I'm like, all right, I don't feel so bad anymore. Um, and then round five, I play against Omnitel. I, I activate my combo on turn three and he's like, I have an Emrakul. And I was like, <sighs> can't win now. Um, I get game two because I'm like, eh, combo off on turn three. He's like, I have an Emrakul. I'm like, I know. Can you please go through the motions? And the Emrakul hits the graveyard. I'm like, with his trigger on the stack, I'm going to uh, surgical extract it. He's like, okay. So next turn I combo off. Um, and then he got, in game three, he actually combos off on turn two. He's like, show and tell. And I'm like, all right, well, Pyroblast it? He's like, force, and I'm like, I guess I lose now. <laughs> so, that's how, and then I was like, okay, I think I'm done with Legacy for the day. Um, and, uh, so, I came over and, uh, then, then I moved on to something else that I really enjoyed doing, watching, um, King Sloth himself perform miracles with this modern deck. Uh, now I gotta talk about this, because, you know, it's, it's actually, the wound is still kind of fresh from the fact that I didn't perform so well in the last round. And I, and I know where I went wrong because uh, I don't know. We'll get it. We'll get into it. Uh, Adam, tell us tell us what the deck was because you you know more about the deck than I do, which is weird because I played it for a week. I gold fished it for a week, and I was like, man, this deck's pretty cool. So I like, might I might play it day two to have fun. I know I'm not going to win. So like a month ago, Travis Wu posted this modern deck that plays a uh, Goryo's Vengeance and Nara set and uh, Omniscience and Enter the Infinite, and basically it's just a stupid combo deck that's supposed to kill people one turn, one or two. Um, so me and I'm looking at Vince, and I'm like, hey man, we should put this together. We already have some pieces. And he's like, okay. So we actually drive all around Newport News. <laughs> and we go to Newport News. We go to um, Gloucester. We go to Yorktown. <laughs> all, like, we, we just got to find the piece for this deck, and we're just going to put it together and see what it does. It was a mission. So we, we finished the deck, and... I was goldfishing for a while, and I was like, ah, it's cool, but I don't think it's going to do anything. And uh, so over the course of testing for the Richmond Open, Victor's like, I don't, I think I'm going to play Burn on that too. I was like, you want to play something fun? 
and I put this deck in his hands, and he's like, how does it work? And I showed him, he's like, wait, you can turn one Emrakul, people? Uh, <laughs> in modern, we're not talking about legacy, where, where you have broken combos. We're talking about modern here, people. Modern turn one Emrakul. It's still broken. <laughs> you know, he's like, this is, this is awesome. I think I'm going to play it. I think uh, I'm going to I was like, I, you know what, I think I'm going to play this, I really do, and I'm going to have fun. I'm going to put some stupid stuff in the sideboard, and, and that actually is going to come back to haunt us, and we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, one thing that Adam pointed out to me, because when I swung with Narset one time, I hit Enter the Infinite, and I was like, oh, well, I guess I lose. And then Adam was like, uh, have you read Fury of the Horde? Just pitch two red cards. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't know that until, like, two days before I actually played it. And um, it... it it's, it's just such a broken deck. It's so good. There were, I think, five matches, five games within the rounds. You have five games that I turn one Emrakul to somebody, and they were just, like, totally cool with it. They were like, yo, the deck's so so sweet. There's no, like, dude, where did you get that list? People were coming up to me and asking. Between the rounds, Adam even heard it. There were people talking about the deck that I was playing. They were talking about me playing the deck. They were talking about, like, how uh, gutsy I was for playing it, the way that I played it, the manner in which I played it. Uh, and uh, I ended up going four and three into the final round. I was uh, obviously four and two, and if I won one more round, I would get into the top sixteen. This deck would be featured on Star City Games, and I would send it to Travis Wu and be like, "Yo, dog, I got your deck featured. You're the man. Thanks for this deck." So I get to the final round, and I see a serum powder, and I'm just like, "I love serum powder. Let me powder this hand away." And it was the wrong thing to do at that time. I got Galvanic Blasted to lose the first game, which was kudos to him. He waited it out. He was a good guy. Uh, but what we did in the sideboard, because I was like, man, I'm just here to have fun today. I, you know, I don't really care. I'm having the time of my life. I'm playing, like, my first big tournament of Magic. I put Nickel Bolas in the side, and we put Angel's Grace. And we knew there was going to be a lot of uh, artifact-based decks. Affinity was going to be there, and we should have played... Like Shattering Spree, Hercules Shatter, Recall. Hercules Recall, stuff like that. Instead, we just played some other just janky cards, and actually, when it actually came back to haunt me because I got I got hit with a Graph Digger's Cage and I couldn't fight through that. That's fine. Um, there was another time I actually played Affinity three times that day. I beat Affinity twice, and the last one was the one that I lost. Um, one of the ones that went wrong for him is he went way too deep in turn one. And it's turn one. You're not expecting me to hit my combo on turn one. He had a spell pierce in hand, so he could have spell pierced my Gorio's Vengeance on turn one, but he just didn't think about it. But people were losing their minds. We had, well, the, was it the final round? It was like five people standing around watching. There were a, there was two judges behind the guy. There was a judge in the seat beside me just watching me exile every card through my hand, just powdering everything away and just going off. And, and it, was, it was just a dream. People were just loving the deck and... It was pretty cool. I had people coming up to me when I was standing in line to get my uh, to get the cash because I came in 29th. It's a big surprise there. Uh, people were asking me about the deck. They were asking to look at the main deck and everything, and uh, we we networked with them. They're actually friends of Run Runner Games now, and it was just a really cool experience. And it was awesome to be the talk of the town for a day. Uh, it'll never happen again. But <laughs> <laughs> the best part was we were after we finished, we were like, oh, there's people were like, there's no way you can cash. I was like, I think there is. I think there is. I was ready to go because I really didn't think there was. I really didn't. I'm not going to lie to like you. It's, I was like, it's only another 30 minutes. Might as well just stand around and wait. And lo and behold, he ended up making his money back. 29th place. I made my money back and $20. So so I lost my entry fee from the first day. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But, but you know, it was it was, it was was a really good weekend. Uh, my, my roommate's going to bed. Good night. Good night. They saw go, go, what are you doing? What are you doing? But yeah, Hello? That was that was our weekend. Um, I oh. had a lot of fun. Overall records, uh, let's go ahead and point them out and we'll laugh at each other. No. Uh, <laughs> I, I agree, no. Uh, Adam was two and seven? Try again. Two and nine? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vince anyway. was... Vince was what? Um, four and... Six. Four and six, and my overall record on paper was nine and eight, I think. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. I got 
What? I got a date. Oh, he's got a date. My roommate's got a date. However, not on paper. I was I was ten and seven. So I think oh. I did very well for the runner runner games and supporting us and representing. Yeah. Should Should we go ahead and point out that someone else who was uh, Foster? A uh, no, no no, Legacy Day, Michael Kenny, blah blah blah. Oh yeah, go ahead. Kenny. Yeah, go ahead. Um, another member affiliate of Runner Runner Games has a he top sixteen the Legacy Open with a dredge deck. He's been playing the same deck in Legacy since uh, he qualified for the first Invitational. Well, that's the right um, thing to do, though. Right. Um, you know, he he was uh, X and two going to last round, and he won his last round. Yeah, I knew he couldn't top eight, but he did finish in the top sixteen. So I'm gonna go ahead and point that out while we're here. Good um, job. We're proud of you. place, Michael Kinney. Proud of him. So. I mean, he did a good job. Yay. Yay. <laughs> we're also dejected because we all lost and didn't do anything except for me right but I'm actually I'm very surprised that I did so well because it was my first big tournament so Speaking especially with, first the, big with the most overpowered underpowered deck in the format <laughs> that makes any sense go it was ahead, awesome Vince. that's an awesome deck I, it is people loved and hated me go on Vince yeah. what were you going to say sorry I'm going to yawn Oh. He was segueing no, to GP New yeah, Jersey. I was, yeah, I was, I was segueing to You're GP New Jersey. Jersey. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, good job, Victor. Um, but no, uh, first big tournaments, uh, I did get the pleasure of going to um, Grand Prix New Jersey, not this past weekend, the weekend before. And that was the first big legacy tournament that I ever played in. Um, it was nine rounds of Swiss day one, uh, with three more rounds of Swiss day two, plus top eight. It was a big tournament. It was the 4,200 players uh, before everybody dropped after the first round. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it was insane. Like it was it was a lot of people. It was a great it was great. Um, I ended up going four and zero to begin with. Then I caught my first loss to a deck that I don't even know what to call. Um, and then I won. Uh, I, moral of the story is I ended the day at um, I ended Always. the day fi- uh, five and three. Cool. Uh, for nine rounds, so I dropped the last round just because there was no way I could get to day two. I didn't have enough points, but it was just all in all, it was a great day. The camaraderie was awesome. Yes. You know how much money there was in GP New Jersey in if, <laughs> if if I could if I could imagine like Magic Player Heaven dying and going to it would be G, GP New Jersey. I saw foils of cards I did not think existed. I want to take this time to point out that everyone. Just talking about the new way Star City is formatting their opens, how they're killing... Hey, quote, people unquote, are killing, upset about it. Killing Legacy. They're not killing Legacy. Do you not see all the players who showed up for GP New Jersey? The problem we're having is there's more standard players than Legacy players. That's just how it is. Standard is easier to get into. Yeah, Legacy um, is also more expensive. It, it's mentally taxing on judges, commentators, players, uh TOs um, to play 11 rounds in one day. Yeah. So I understand completely while they're going to the new format. They're going to the new format. Okay. They're going to have less legacy opens. But your prize support for standard is bigger. If you're not as big as in the standard, you still have the premier IQ. You have your options between legacy and modern on Sunday. They're both there for you. You're not actually losing on legacy. You can still play legacy on Sunday. You can play in the standard open day one. If you don't do so well, you have two options for day two. If you do do well, well, you know, you have to play the GP style thing. But look at the prize payout. More points, more money, more invitations for the invitationals. It's a good direction, basically. More bacon. More also, bacon. there is going to be, I think, uh, for the first half of the year, I saw three legacy opens and a modern open, which means two full days of modern, which people have been Dying. begging. For. They've been dying for it. Yes. Begging for it. The biggest GP of all time was the modern GP in Richmond last year. 47,000 or 4,700 4, people? 4,700. 4,700. Yeah. 4, something like that. Maybe but, there. Yeah. People were saying that the uh, GP in New Jersey was going to be bigger. It was not. It was not, but it was the largest legacy tournament of all time. Right. Yes. It was so, quite amazing. To all those people hating on Star City, what they're doing makes sense. Um, I know for a fact that if you play, if you if you XO day one, there's eleven rounds. You play nine rounds of Magic, 
and you can double draw into the top eight. You have to stay for the last two rounds in the tournament hall to make sure you can, you know, intentional draw with your opponents into the top eight. Then you have to get up at six in the morning, be back at the center at 7 a.m. ready to battle. I'm pretty sure you're exhausted from day one. You didn't get enough sleep because you had to go home, look over the deck list. You were like, all right, here's what top eight is. Here's what I have to play against. Here's what's most likely around one matchup. And you're like prepping and you're mentally exhausted. And you're not ready. Spacing it out just makes more sense. So everyone that's hating probably just needs to go and think about it in a different sense. Well, people don't like change, and this is a, a change that's just a little bit, you know, it's it's harder for them to grasp because it's, it's just been this way for so long, and it's foreign well, to them. And it's, it's I personally, I I think it's the right direction to head in, but I don't go to a lot of big tournaments anyways uh, as, as such. This was my first big one. So, you know, little guys like me are probably going to support it, even though it doesn't really affect us. I don't know how the pros feel yet. We'll, we'll find out soon enough. And, I mean, it, it is what it is. I, I really believe they have headed in the proper direction. What are we looking at on time here, guys? Well, we've been going out for about 40 minutes, so I think maybe now is a good stopping time, and we can talk about more of the pitfalls and things that we did incorrectly, um, where we think we're heading with other formats, because we've... I don't know. Vince has a good point. I should stick to modern, and I sh I kind of agree with him. Maybe modern is my format, but I do like legacy cards because they look like they contain magic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're old and they look cool, you know. But I haven't been playing but like two years, so eh, I guess I'm bad at magic or something still. But I think it's like I said, it's a good stopping point. As always, thank you, Vince. Thank you, Adam. I think it was actually a very good show tonight, very informative, and we regaled them with many tales of nose. And uh, I, visit I, our website. Visit our website, as always. Do we have any other closing words, guys? Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, that's right. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Krakens aren't whales. Uh, just be thankful for all those extra lands you're going to draw the next time you go to FNM. I think that's about it. Wait, what? You know, you know, like that time when you draw a bunch of lands and you lose. Just be thankful you're drawing lands. Krakens aren't whales. Krakens are not whales. They're cephalopods or something. Yes. All right. Adam. All right. Well, that's that's it. We're done. Sure. This has been a presentation of Runner Runner Games. You can find us on the web at runnerrunnergames.com or facebook.com slash runnerrunnergames. You can send a message to runnerrunnergames at gmail.com to be added to the growing email list for show updates and playtest videos. Thank you for listening. <laughs>